What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we are going to talk to you about vertical gardening. Whoop whoop! This video is part of the Homestarters of America series on growing your own food. This is Kenny and I'm Courtney and I wanted to share a little bit about us first. Kenny, a recovering city dweller, is a builder of all things. Mm -hmm. Mostly things that I come up with him to build. Like chicken coops and goat barns and milking stands and anything else I decide to do. Pretty much that list is a never-ending list of projects that you want me to make. That's true. I'm a recovering shopaholic that has converted from buying shoes and purses to plants and animals. I guess you're not really recovered then, Courtney, since you're still buying things. Better things. True. A couple years ago, we decided to document everything that we've been learning and going through as a family. So we try to show what we are doing and what we're learning and how we're making mistakes, but enjoying the process and having fun doing it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk to you about vertical gardening, but we're also going to show you how you can get started pretty quickly in vertical gardening without feeling tremendously overwhelmed, I guess. Try to find ways that are quick and simple that you can get started on pretty much right away. Maybe just by going through your house and finding some things that um, you may not have thought of. Or maybe you did. So what exactly is vertical gardening? Well, it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? It's vertical and it's gardening. That's pretty much it. It's growing things vertically. For me, a lot of the benefits of vertical gardening have focused not only on space utilization, but having better yields. I found that what I have planted in any of our vertical gardening systems have produced more food. Uh, and the reason is that we're conserving nutrients, they're easier to water, and I don't have a lot of pest issues. Like I'm not having rabbits come in and eat things because they're not close to the ground. For me, I've got a terrible back. So if we have to come in and do some trimming to the plants, weeding, or maybe you know we're picking our fruit, instead of crawling around the ground and, and getting on my hands and knees or whichever, I can actually stand up and see everything I need to see, clip it. Even if I'm in a, a garden box, a raised bed, my beds are raised to a point where I can get on my knees but still keep my back straight and do everything I need to do in it. It's pretty awesome in terms of saving energy for your body, but also just that, that time. time. Time, oh my gosh, the weeding difference is incredible. I mean, to be honest, that's one of the most difficult things about gardening for me is keeping control of the weeds and vertical gardening has such a big impact on that. One of the other awesome things about vertical gardening is companion planting. For instance, if we're using a raised bed, I can have a trellis in the back of that bed that grows a vining plant, say pole beans, and in the front of that, garden bed, I can plant something else that maybe is a bit more of a shade loving plant and get more yield out of one single garden bed. And the last thing for us that we love about vertical gardening is that it's fun. It's, it's fun to plant the things in there. It's fun to take care of the plants. Our kids get way more involved in the process. It's a lot easier to kind of corral them than having a large open area garden where I'm a little worried that my daughter's picking out all the tomatoes and throwing them in the woods. They do way less damage yeah, too. way less damage. Vertical gardening, folks. It's where it's at. Do it. All right, so now we've gone over all of the benefits of vertical gardening, what it is. Let's go outside and look at how you can get started in vertical gardening. One of the first things that we're going to talk about are trellises. Trellises are our friends. This trellis has a very simple setup. This is a piece of a cattle or hog panel from, from a feed store. We've got two T posts as well as zip ties. This is very simple for those of us who are not very um, mechanically or spatially aware. You'll see that down here at the bottom of the trellis, I have a box to plant in. What I would do in a spot like this is plant cucumbers in the back 
that they can grow up this trellis instead of out and down. And in the front, I would plant something that grows well with cucumbers. Um, you could do dill, lettuces. You could even, depending on the direction of the sun, do tomatoes and peppers in front of it. Uh, the way the sun comes for us, we could do that. A benefit of putting, say, a tomato plant or, or a pepper plant in front of here is that you can utilize this trellis to help hold up some of those heavy plants. Another thing that I like to do with these cattle panels, particularly when there's going to be a really heavy fruit, like a cantaloupe or a small pumpkin, is use them as an arch between these boxes. So I can plant my cantaloupe here, allow them to grow over this arch, and utilize the space underneath for shade-loving plants, like, say, kale. If you're doing something like that with a heavier fruit and it's not gonna be supported on the ground, you wanna make sure that you support it with something else, like some sort of net, or you can even use, like, pantyhose. I mean, they still sell those. I don't know who's wearing them, but they do still sell them. That can be used to hold up your fruit that would normally be supported by the ground. So another simple thing you can do in order to grow a vertical garden uh, because maybe you don't have room for uh, a box or a trellis or whichever. You can just use a simple pallet. Now this seems silly, but you can kind of knock out a couple of these boards, take the board you knocked out, nail it in on the underside, plant on the top side, and then these openings will be good openings for your, your herbs or whatever it is that you're trying to grow. It's crude but effective. You got to remember, you're trying to utilize whatever minimal space that you might have. If you've got tons of space, maybe this doesn't make any sense. But if you don't, this is perfect. Another thing you can do with pallets, if you've got two of them, is actually create some sort of a ladder or a V and plant at the bottom of them. And then things can just kind of grow up along here and you've got sort of the same thing as a trellis. Another thing you can do is pretty simple. If you've got a bucket or some kind of planter, you're gonna put your dirt in the bucket, put your uh, beans in the bucket, whatever it is that you're trying to grow, and then give it something to grow on. Now, I've got three pieces of wood that were in my shop, uh, and I've drilled holes in the top here. All I need is something to tie these together whether it be a twine or whether it's uh, zip ties, which I'm gonna use, it doesn't really matter. But we're gonna get these in here. Now normally I would use maybe four of these instead of three, but this will work just fine. There you go. Now I've got myself a nice sturdy little TP trellis, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe you don't have wood in your garage, maybe you do and you don't have a way to cut it up, I don't really know. You can also do the same exact thing from sticks that are in the yard. Uh, if you've got a drill, drill some holes through it. If you don't have a drill, then you just kind of keep wrapping twine around until you've got this very sturdy top side and you're good. I love me some green beans and we use this all the time for green beans. One of my favorite places to grill herbs or lettuce is in a hanging pot. The benefit of a hanging pot is when you're in the middle of a season where you get a ton of rain, you don't have to worry about your plants getting overwatered. Water drains really well from these, and I'm utilizing space that I never would have had. Hanging pots are also great for strawberries. I wouldn't grow something like a cucumber from this because the root system just wouldn't be ample enough, but a great place to hang a strawberry plant. You don't want the strawberries laying in the dirt. And again, we're utilizing the, that vertical space, this time in the downward trajectory. I also like to utilize these boxes on our deck. These I will utilize for some heavier plants. Uh, last year I grew uh, birdhouse gourds out of this. And as they grew, I just wrapped them along the, the rails of the deck to support the gourds and utilize a space that would otherwise be empty. 
The last way that we're gonna talk about vertical gardening is one of my favorite ways and a super easy way to get started if you don't have anything that you can utilize to vertical garden. These are green stock vertical planters. This is our second year utilizing these and honestly, it saved our garden last year. These are the only reason we had much of any produce at all. What I like about these is I can plant a multitude of different plants. We have ones that are five levels high and there are six of these slots on each side. So that's 30 plants in just one tower. The other great thing is that these provide a system of being able to plant things at the bottom that don't like heavy afternoon sun. So I can grow dark leafy greens, lettuces, those sort of things down here longer than I would in an open garden. When I get up to here, I'm gonna plant my larger plants to provide some shade for underneath. So say this is an area I'd probably put my tomato starts. And then I've got this cool little add-on here that as my tomatoes grow, they'll grow up through here and be supported and they'll grow out a bit so that my plants right here still have room. If you like these and want to order one, we have a $10 off coupon code that we'll leave in the description for you. When we talked about the benefits of vertical gardening, we mentioned conserving resources. This vertical planter allows us to conserve water because it has a drip irrigation system. That also means that we're conserving our soil's nutrients because we're not having a bunch of water runoff either. When you're vertical gardening, make sure that you're using a loose soil. Uh, you want to make sure that your roots have ample room to grow and get all of the nutrients and water that they need. Make sure it's not super compact. You can tap it down, but don't make it hard and keep your soil moist, but not wet. So what kind of things can we grow in a vertical garden? You can pretty much grow anything you want. Just got to make sure if it's a vining vegetable, give it something to climb on. If it's not a vining vegetable, such as the lettuces, then something like that vertical growing garden is perfect because you've got all those pockets and you can have all those different places for the lettuce to grow. Thank you for watching. We hope that you learned something about producing your own food. If a reformed shopaholic and me, this guy, Sidia, can learn to grow food, I promise you, you can too. There are tons of resources out there on vertical growing. Check them out. Do some searches on the internet. You will find so many different answers. There's tons of videos already on YouTube that you can see where they go through vertical gardening. So look at those as well. This is simply just a quick overview and how you could get started, what you can look at. We, again, we hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, comment below, check out all the other videos in the Homesteaders of America Grow Your Own Food series, and we'll see you on the next one.